Good evening on ITV. I'm at this is here. Today we're going to look at urinary tract infection. What is it? How serious is it? Is it something you should be concerned about? Why should you go to hospital when you have it? How would you even know that what you're suffering is UTI? Some persons will say sweetie. Other persons will... You know, we have a lot of names for that thing, but in the local parlance, they call it sweetie. And it could be very very embarrassing how painful is it can uti lead to other problems this and many more dr jolly nosa egoma cmd of jono's medical center here in benin city is going to be discussing with us today on the program and we're going to leave our lines open quite early for you to call in because this topic is a very sensitive one dr jolly nosa egoma happy to have you join us this afternoon as usual all right uh doctor quickly what is a urinary tract infection uti for the purpose of this we could interchange you could say uti or we'll call it in full so what is uti doctor urinary tract infection is the multiplication of bacteria in the urinary tract it is associated with the presence of greater than 10 raised to power 5 of this you know those greater than those mathematics and all of this is hard for us to comprehend. Yes. So let's just hit it straight. The way the ordinary man out there will understand. Yeah. There is a colonization and multiplication of bacteria in the urinary tract. Okay. The urinary tract, of course, is not free from bacteria. Okay. So it is only when the value exceeds. 10 raised to power 5. Okay. Colony form units per meal of urine. So that bacteria is, bacteria is yes. always there. Bacteria is found in the lower urine tract. Of course, the organism that is responsible for the urinary tract infection is a normal commissar in the colon. Okay. That's to say that if those organisms that reside normally, that even protect the colon, mm. if those organisms find their way into the urinary tract, tract infection, it becomes an infection. So how do those organisms find their way into yes. the UTI? We cannot say that urinary tract infection affects male, affects female. Does it, it affect is very children? Common. Yes. Does it, it affect children too? It affects children too. Mm. It affects all age group. But it affects women more than men. Mm. It affects sexually active women mm -hmm. as compared to preschool female children. Okay. The reason be that the female has a short urethra. Mm. And these bacteria must find their way from the urethra down to the bladder, from the bladder to the ureter, the ureter to the kidney. Of course, when we say the urinary tract, mm. they involve the kidney, the ureter that collects the urine that is formed in the kidney down to the bladder where it is stored, and from the bladder, the urine is passed out to the urethra, mm -hmm. and the urethra is connected to the main penis and also the kidney that the wow. So, in all, there is a bacteria that colonizes the lower urinary tract, mm -hmm. which is the, um, the urethra. When this value exceeds 10 to the power 5 colony for many units, that is when it becomes significant. However, there's what we call asymptomatic bacteria. Mm. That is to say that somebody may have this territory for a five chloride form of with the presence of neutrophil in the urine that mm. is a pointer towards the urinary tract infection. But this person will not manifest any symptom. Now, still considering how those bacteria find their way into the urinary tract and the colon, yes. you can see that in female, the other than the fact that they have a short urinary tract, yeah, their right. anus is also closed to the urethra. Mm, and most true. female, when they are cleaning up in the toilet, they do what we call backward forward. I tell you that most persons, whether they have urinary tract infection, whether they have sexual infection, they will hide under this umbrella of toilet okay, infection. Mm. So I will tell you that most toilet infection that we can accept medically to say, okay, this is what is responsible for this infection, is this urinary tract infection. Mm -hmm. Because when women do cleaning from the back, back forward, the they carry infection from the colon or from the rectum down to their 
to their uh, urethra. And those, and when they get to the urethra, there is a possibility of this microorganism, which are usually bacteria. And the bacteria that we have accumulated as a cause of the urinary tract infection mm -hmm. include the Escherichia coli. In fact, 80% of this organism that is responsible for urinary tract infection are enterobacteriosis. It's a grand negative bacteria, Escherichia coli. Not only that, we also have what we call the Staphylococcus apophyticus. Mm -hmm. We have the Staphylococcus epidemidis. Okay. We have the Proteus and we have the Klebsiella. Even the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. All these are bacterial it, organisms that invade. You're, you're, you're speaking. Uh, uh, this, this, these are very yeah. bacteria, of course, yes. that we have accumulated as a cause of urinary tract infection. Yeah. As I said earlier on, they, those bacteria are normal commensals. They live inside they our body. They, they, yes, exactly. They also help to protect our colon. Mm -hmm. But it's only when they find their way into this the urethra, urethra and they colonize. And I tell you that the urine is a good medium for the growth and multiplication of bacteria. That is why, you see, when the urine has its own characteristics, aromatic color, but if you pass urine in your water system and you don't flush, after three to four hours, go in there and see the effluvium, the stench, and the kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 smell that will be emanating from the urine. You can see that when there is a urine, that is exposed, there is bound to be bacterial growth. Mm -hmm. So we can use this analogy to say that anything that is capable of causing urinary retention or urinary stasis in the system can result to urinary tract infection. Mm -hmm. For example, you see that some persons, they have what they call a complete emptying of the bladder. What it means is that they don't, the residual urine in the bladder is more than that 15 mils that is accepted physiologically. Those persons might have more urine retained, maybe because of one disease or the other. Okay. Like in pregnancy, when a woman is pregnant because of the hyperdynamic state, there is, an pinch, is, the, is there a possibility of, of, of the fact that you, the embryo, the fetus in the developing uh, in, the, in, the, in the uterus or the womb might impede on the bladder, thereby it might cause that total emptiness. Therefore, a pregnant woman might be prone to having urinary tract infection for the reason be that she, have, she does not you know, pass urine completely. Mm -hmm. There's a retention of urine. Okay. Other than pregnancy, we also have conditions like urethral stricture, something that we you know, cause uh, blockage to the proper flow of oh, urine, urine from the kidney down to the ureter, ureter, bladder, bladder, any, that is, any structure or any uh, malignancy or anything like kidney stone that is capable of causing that, uh, you know, that, flow, that flow, of course, is bound to cause uh, this urinary tract infection. Even in elderly, you see some persons, they suffer what we call the benign prostatic are people that have prostate enlargement. Such persons, they are prone to having urinary tract infection. And other conditions like people that have uh, uh, multiple sclerosis, all these are neurological conditions, people that have diabetic neuropathy. Mm -hmm. Such person, they are bound to have, because of the poor innovation of those names, you know, there is this reflex. Of course, when your bladder is full, you are supposed to have, you know, a, that sensation of say, oh, I want to go to urine. But people that have this kind of condition, multiple sclerosis, uh, diabetic neuropathy, they don't feel that sensation. So they retain urine more than the general group. Such persons are bound to come down with urinary tract infection. Not only that, in hospital care, sometimes catheter for people that are unable to urinate, yes. they are only dwelling catheter. They feel something like a, a tube in their urethra, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to pass, to urine. pass urine. I will tell you that this procedure we also prone somebody to developing urinary tract That's infection true. as compared ah. to the general group. So you can see that anything, even sometimes when there are other gynecological conditions, like what you call the uterine prolapse. So such person, they are bound to have urinary tract infection. And even in some other condition, like women that are no more menstruating, that are postmenopausal, okay. they are bound to have what you call the atrophic vaginitis or atrophic urethritis, all these are medical conditions. Mm -hmm. But however, I'm telling you that there are conditions or there are situations that will make somebody to be prone to develop wow. urinary tract infection mm -hmm. than the general group. I will try to also atomize why females are prone to develop urinary tract infection mm -hmm. as compared to males. 
In May, there is an organ that is referred to as the prostrate. Of course, this prostrate mm -hmm. is an organ that also produces a spermicidal agent. This spermicidal agent also helps to detoxify bacteria that is capable of transporting itself from the urethra down to the upper urinary tract. But this prostrate is absent in May. This will also cause it's, it's absent in female. female. This will also cause female to come down with urinary tract infection okay. as compared to the, male. to the male. And not only that, I will tell you that during sexual intercourse, mm. there's a possibility that the urethra may be injured. And when there's an injury, there is a, when there's a minor injury to the urethra, this may also cause movement of bacteria, bacteria. from the vestibule or from the perineum down to the bladder, thereby resulting to what we call to the Resulted to what we call the honeymoon cystitis, usually caused by honeymoon cystitis. <laughs> caused by, you see, some women after uh, honeymoon or sexual intercourse, they will come down with this pain mm. that is simulating, or uh, we can, that is looking more or less like a urinary tract infection. Mm -hmm. Of course, we cannot say that. This person, of course, probably developed what you call the Onimosis, mm -hmm. titis, titis caused by Staphylococcus apophyticus. So you see that urinary tract infection, as we have been able to highlight, affects all groups, but mm -hmm. common in female as compared to male. And there are also medical condition that will make somebody to come down with urinary tract infection as compared to the general group. Thank you so much, Dr. Jolly Guma. Now, what are the signs and symptoms? What should the woman look out for, and what should the man look out for? And then we'll now come down to the children. How would you know that uh, such a child has a uh, UTI? Yes. So we start with that of the female because it's like it's predominant in the female. Yes. So that all the all women watching will know what to do. The urinary tract infection, of course, can be complicated or complicated. Mm. It can also be symptomatic and oh, asymptomatic. Yes, so you see, when I was trying to define the urinary tract infection, I made mention of ten to power five colony forming units. Mm. It's possible that a female will just go for a screening or for, for, for a urinalysis or a laboratory test. Mm. Now and this for, for those that will want to go, because most often the time, yes, we don't exactly. Go check. When you do a urine test for, say, you want to test for an infection for urinary tract infection, it's possible that this particular male or female will have this greater than ten to power five colony forming units per meal of urine. That's to say that this person has a urinary tract infection. Yes. She, he or she might not be manifesting the symptom. So that's what we call asymptomatic bacteria. And we also have what we call the symptomatic cystitis. What it means is that the person might come down with lower abdominal pain or may also come down with painful urination. Mm. The person may also come down with acute prostatitis, usually in May. And not only that, the person may also come down with acute pyelonephritis. In that case, somebody might begin to feel blood in urine. There might be a pain in the, in the loin area. There will be tenderness around the kidney area. But the, because the acupallonephritis itself is a, when we are talking about the complication, we also talk about the acupallonephritis. Mm -hmm. In overall, somebody that has a urinary tract infection might have his or her bladder infected, what we call cystitis. Mm -hmm. The urethra might also be infected, what we call the urethritis. The uh, kidney might be infected, what we call the acute pyelonephritis. You can see that the bacteria that transmits itself or transport itself from the lower urinary tract will end up in the upper yeah. urinary tract. Oh, yeah. And by the time it gets to the upper urinary tract, it might become a systemic infection, mm. which may result to hospitalization or admission of these patients. Mm. In overall, the symptoms of urinary tract infection include pain while urinating, okay. what we call dysuria in both male and, and female. female. You feel this pain, painful urination. Other than the painful urination, you may also feel lower abdominal pain okay. during or after urinating. There may also be frequency in urination. You urinate, after like 20 minutes, you still see yourself going to urinate again. Urinate. So all these are symptoms of urinary tract infection. Not only that, somebody may also have fever. But fever will come up if the urinary tract infection is becoming complicated, usually yeah. if the kidney is not involved. So and mm, one of the complications is... Yes, exactly. The, when 
problem with the kidney. Yes, it's one it's problem with the kidney. Uh, definitely, we, 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 are, we are like that. So you will see that urinary tract infection is a symptom that you or your own can be able to diagnose. Okay. You see that you are not urinating frequently. You see that you are not having pain while urinating. You see that there is no urgency in urinating. In urinating. You see that maybe before you, you feel the urge of uh, urinating, before you even go to where you are urinating, it's already coming yeah. out. So you see that either there's a problem with the prostate, as in the case of prostatitis, mm. acute prostatitis, which is a form That's of urinary tract infection. It could also be a cystitis. It could also be a, a acute pyelonephritis. In that case, the kidney is affected in vivo, which, is, which might result to a systemic uh, 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 mortality or death, as the case may be. As I also highlighted earlier, I said we can, we can also have complicated urinary tract infection. I will tell you that if you say just urinary tract infection, but I tell you that urinary tract infection can result to a urethra stricture. In that case, the person will be unable to urinate mm. because there is a channel, just like the way I said, the kidney, the ureter, the bladder, the urethra. When there is a stricture, or maybe there is a fibrosis as a result of the, of the bacterial effects on the urinary tract, the person might, um, be, might be unable to pass urine pass again urine. as a result of the bacterial invasion. Wow. So in that case, we now say there is a stricture. And when there is a stricture, a stricture, that might result to what we call the ureto-vesical reflux. And this might cause damage or chronic renal failure to the kidney itself. Mm. Other than that, Urinary tract infection have also been criminated to be a cause of infertility in both male and female. Like as I said earlier on, the prostate is an essential organ that also secretes, you know, a fluid that form part of the sperm during the sperm formation. Yes. So when the prostate is infected, you can see that, of course, the the, the, of the, 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 the yes, exactly, the fertility uh, tract of the male is already compromised. Other than that we can also have what we call the acute pyelonephritis. In that case, the kidney itself is not affected. And the person will feel pain in the loin, tenderness around the kidney area, and fever. Mm. The person might also begin to pass blood in urine. And this is a thing, you cannot ask me now, how did this infection get to get the to kidney? That, to, to the, it's usually from point. the lower urinary tract. And I have told oh, you earlier on that bacteria is not free from the lower urinary tract. But what we make this bacteria to increase or multiply are as a result of stasis or urinary retention, which I said is common in some individuals that have some medical so conditions, which I've highlighted yes. earlier on. So other than that, you can also have what we call the septicemia. In septicemia, it means that the bacteria in the tract are not finding their way inside the blood. So when the entire blood of this individual it's is not filled up with bacteria and they now use the blood as a feeding tract for, you know, for multiplication, the person, of course, might pass out wow. in that case. So, might die. Yeah, of course. So oh. urinary tract infection is a thing that everyone must treat as soon as possible. Many at times, even in the hospital, when, when we know that this person has a urinary tract infection as evidenced by the symptoms and examination presented, we do a urinalysis or a urine culture, okay. which takes like 48 hours or two hours for the result to be out. But we may not even wait for the time. result before we start treating, except in some very rare cases for somebody that is having recurrent urinary tract infection. To tell you about, because we don't want the complication to come up. You know that uh, for adults, we're able to talk, we're able to feel, we're able to say how, exactly how we're feeling. Now, what do we look out for in children? Yes, in children, urinary tract infection is common as compared to the average age group. So I will tell you that things that we have to look out for is straining, maybe for a child that does not talk, you see, even the baby, the mother is carrying the baby. You see that when the baby is passing urine, the baby is trained. The baby can even start crying. So even a to, baby can, yes, can, yeah, can, yes. can be Within one year or one year, it can come down with urinary tract infection. Wow. And also, you can wash out for fever. Even the urine color. 
when the urine becomes turbid, because the urine has its characteristic color, the mm. urine has a kind of yellowish color, amber color. Mm. When the urine looks milkish, a kind of, or cloudy, it's a sign for urinary tract infection. Mm. Okay. Other than doing a urine uh, test, with the urine color, you can be able to tell that oh, this uh, child has a urinary tract infection. Mm. Other than strain or pain while passing urine, sometimes I will tell you that some child may also, some children may also come down with fever. So we know that in our environment that malaria is the commonest of cause course, of fever. Of but I've, I've also made you to know that you know that yeah, can also be a cause of fever in children. Exactly. So through proper evaluation, we can be able to know that, oh, this one is urinary tract infection, and we treat accordingly, and the fever at, you know, will be treated you know, at, wow. you know, you at blew, such. You blew my mind a while ago when you said that uh, urinary tract infection can actually kill somebody yes. when not properly managed. Yes, because of the complication. Okay, let's look at uh, treatment management. We're going to open the lines after the break so that you can call in to ask Dr. Jolly Nosa Iguma all the questions you want to ask. Those of us who are mistaking some kind of conditions for toilet disease, I think you should call in to ask the doctor some very salient questions that only you will be able to ask. UTI, if not properly managed, can kill. UTI, if not properly managed, can destroy your kidneys. And when the kidneys are destroyed, not functional anymore, of course, what do you expect? All right, so we're going to do a break. When we come back, Dr. Jolly is going to be talking to us about treatment. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying tuned. The program is held living on ITV, and we are looking at urinary tract infection, curses, treatment, management, and of course, how to avoid contracting such an ailment that can kill you if you are not careful. And we've been discussing with Dr. Jolly Nosai Guma, the CMG of Genos Medical Center here in Benin City. All right, doctor, you've talked to us, you've said quite a number of things, you've, you know, introduced us to this um, uh, ailment and how to tackle it, what to do, what not to do. Now, how do we treat it and how do we manage it? While doctor is talking about treatment and management, you can call us at 052-290-573 to ask Dr. Nosa Jolly questions, 52 290573. That number will be on your screen shortly. And to continue with this conversation when we're done, you can call 080 3472 This is to talk to us directly. 080 All right, 052 290 the number is on your screen. Do give us a call. Okay, Doc, so how do we manage? How do we treat? Yes. The management entails knowing that the patient is coming down with symptoms as a pointer towards the urinary tract infection. We also need to do some laboratory investigation to corroborate the diagnosis. What it means is that we need a sample from this patient, and the sample that we may require from this patient is urine. Mm -hmm. That is, we can do a deep stick urine, that is by dipping uh, a reagent in the urine sample of this uh, patient, usually the midstream urine or early morning urine, or the first urine that is passed out. And what we're actually looking for in this urine is the presence of nitrites. Okay. So when there's nitrites, a urine is a pointer towards a urinary tract infection. Mm. Not only that, we can also check out for the presence of neutrophy or proteins in urine. When there is a neutrophy in urine through the leukocytosterase test that we do, it's also a pointer towards the urinary tract infection. The, the microscopy test that will reveal the number of pulses and if the number of pulses is greater than three or four, it's also an indication for urinary tract infection. Okay. So all this is to balance the symptoms, presentation, and the physical examination that we have done. Mm -hmm. After the laboratory investigation, 
we now have to do the treatment. We already know that urinary tract infection is caused by bacteria. Yes. So the best treatment is to use an antibiotics. Okay, let's take this one. Hello, Carla. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Please, when you call, reduce the audio level so that we can communicate effectively. All right, doctor. Yes. The best treatment for bacteria organism is the use of an antibiotics. But we have to put in mind that antibiotics is not a drug that anyone Hello? can just go Hello, to. Hello, good afternoon. Hold on, doc. Good afternoon. Please speak up because we are pressed for time. Who are we speaking with? Okay, blessing. Go ahead with your question. The urinary tract infection. Okay, so doctor, how would blessing know that uh, like the signs and symptoms that we discussed? Before? Yes, a blessing, as we have said earlier on. Somebody that has a urinary tract infection will have painful urination. That is, if the person is passing urine, the person feels pains. Not only that, there is also what you call the urinary, increase in urinary frequency. If the person passes urine like twice or three times in a day, you see that the person will be passing urine up to like five or more in a day. The person might even wake up at night to be passing urine. And this frequent urination sometimes as a result of diabetes or maybe as a result of an increase in blood sugar level. Not only that, the person may also have what we call a, a cloudy color urine. You will answer that your urine that is supposed to have a characteristic color or a yellowish color now becomes turbid or now looking like shocky. Or it can, your urine might even become offensive or maybe you now start seeing something like a blood uh, spike in your blood, in your, your urine. All these are indication or a pointer towards a urinary tract infection. You might even begin to have low abdominal pain. After passing urine, you feel pain. Even during urination, you also feel pain. All these are pointers towards urination. And when your urinary tract uh, infection becomes complicated, maybe it's not affecting the kidney, you might begin to have fever. That means your body might begin to feel, you might begin to, uh, you know, feel hot in the case of uh, acute pyelonephritis or uh, abscess around the kidney, which is also a complication of a uh, urinary tract infection. Uh, 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 doc, uh, does the person experience, uh, you know, each, uh, whatever? Does, does, does he each discharge and all of that? Okay, you answer my question later. Hello, caller. Hello. 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 Please tell us your name and ask your question. Okay. Uh, uh, when you are calling, quickly tell us your name and go straight to the question so that we can answer you. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Okay, we're going to let that call go. Once your audio level is loud, we'll let you go. Hello? Hello? Okay, doctor, while we're waiting for more calls, at what point does he itch? You yes. know, sometimes you see people scratching and all of that. The urinary tract infection will not actually cause itching to the... No, uh, no itching sensation. Yes, there's no okay. itching sensation in urinary tract infection. But however, the predisposing factor, as in the poor hygienic condition okay. of the person involved, usually the female, you see, we advise that when you are watching in, in toilet training, you don't have to do uh, backward, forward. Okay. Instead, you do uh, forward, forward, backward. backward. So the introduction of microbes or bacteria from the colon or from the rectum down to the genital okay. might cause, you know, multiplication okay. and evasion of bacteria. And through the process of bacteria growth or multiplication, the person might begin to have what you call the vulvo vaginitis or the itching, as the case may be. Okay. But itching is hardly reported. Uh, in, in, UTI. The, in UTI, exactly. How about discharge? Uh, discharge also is not, it, UTI might complicate other causes of itching or discharge. For example, the commonest cause of discharge in female is the 
candidiasis. Okay. Either the candidia arabica, the candidia glabrata, candidia tropicalis, or the candidia cozy. So the candidiasis actually has been communicated as one of the possible causes of uh, itching and discharge. Okay. Maybe as a result of immunosuppression, uh, diabetes. If you... Okay, Dr. Seriska. Hello, Kala. Good afternoon. Hello? Okay, I'm sure we've lost that call. Well, I talk, we're listening to you now. Yes, so there are other causes that will cause uh, itching. If somebody has this uh, candidiasis and there is not coexisting urinary tract infection, mm. it will complicate and exacerbate that uh, 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 candidiasis more. So that one of the is that urinary tract infection may worsen uh, itching that is caused by candidiasis or trachomonas vaginalis. Okay. Uh, what about one? Zero five two two. Hello. Hello. Yes. Tell us your name and ask your question. Reduce the audio level on your television set. Hello. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. My name is Okay. Hello. Good afternoon. Okay, tell us your name and ask your question. My name is Okay. How does How does what? I didn't get that part. How does it affect urine? How does it affect urine? The UTI we are talking about. Okay, doctor. How does the UTI affect urine? Yes. The urinary tract infection is the multiplication of bacteria in the urinary tract. And the lower urinary tract tends to harbor bacteria. That is the anterior one third of the urethra. So, so any person that suffers a complete emptying of the bladder, maybe a man that has prostate problem and is unable to completely empty his bladder. Of course, that is a pointer towards developing a urinary tract infection. Or maybe somebody that has been on the catheter or instrumentation involving the urethra. Mm -hmm. What is a possible cause of developing the urinary tract infection? And not only that, if you don't take water regularly, if you don't take water regularly, we advise that every individual should take at least two liters of water per day. Mm -hmm. Because the commonest cause of this urinary tract infection is the Escherichia coli. And the particular strain of this Escherichia coli is heteroadherent. That is the particular strain. So what they do is that since they abort on the lower urinary tract, mm -hmm. they can find their way into the upper urinary tract, like the ureter and the kidney. Okay. They move, you know, they are dead to the, you know, ureter lining. So when you pass urine frequently, and you cannot pass urine without intake, it's only when you take in that you pass urine. So one way of preventing urinary tract infection is also to influence, is also to increase fluid intake. Because you, urine is a medium for bacterial growth. As far as you are passing urine, there must, also, there must be a bacterial growth in your urinary tract. Mm. It's only when the value reaches or is greater than 10 raised to the power 5 colony for me you need per 1 mil of urine. That is when it becomes significant or the person may be prone to developing this urinary tract infection. Mm. If not, for as much as every individual passes urine, there is always a bacteria there. Okay, let's take a last call now. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Can you reduce the audio level on your television Hello, can you set? I can hear you. Hello? I can hear you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Hello? Ask your question. I can hear you. Okay, my daughter. 
because I normally drink enough water. But she drinks too much water. Mm. And she, and she, Your daughter drinks a lot of water. She drinks plenty of water. Anyway, that's not a problem because doctor just said that drink a lot of water and you'll be happy. Okay? And if you're prone to UTI, you would also be happier if you start drinking lots of water. At least you will not have that place anymore. So, doctor, in conclusion now. Yes, there are ways we can actually prevent this urinary tract infection. Okay. What it means is that we have to imbibe and practice good lifestyle. Okay. In FIME, this idea of watching or cleaning backward forward should be discouraged. Okay, it's because front infection, backward. Yes, it's front backward. And not only that, for, people, for females, most especially, because, that, because that <laughs> come down with recurrent urinary tract infection. Yes. It's possible for you to treat urinary tract infection this month and the two months time you are still coming down with urinary tract really? infection. In such a case, we advise that there must be adequate fluid intake, at least two liters of, of fluid water. or water per day. Not only that, they have to practice voiding or maturation, that yes. is urinating before intercourse and maturating or voiding urine after intercourse, after intercourse. before and after. So All these are ways important. of preventing, you know, uh, urinary tract infection. Okay, for you to continue with this conversation, please call us on 080-3472-1750. 080-3472-1750. That's the number with which you can call us after now. Thank you, Dr. Johnny. Thank for finding you. time to be with us on the program. All right, people, this is all we're going to do today. We'll see you again on Monday. Join us on Thursdays on Independent Radio for the Pigeon English version of Healthy Living. Every Thursday, 3.15 p.m. Bye-bye.